the sights and sounds of Pennhurst, the state institution for the mentally retarded. It's located in Spring City, Chester County. In 1908, when the institution first opened, the man in charge bitterly complained to the state that the conditions were already overcrowded. He transferred many of the patients to Q1, a classroom building. Many of them are still there. Lori was born with Down syndrome. My in-laws kept saying to me, nobody was ever born like this in our family. This is the end. You don't have to go to any other doctors. He's not going to be any better than he is now. People thought that if I touch you, they would automatically get it. It's like a disease. In the 18th century, the mentally retarded were often ignored, punished, and exploited. Today, things are supposed to be different. Modern 20th century man is much more scientific and civilized. Today, we no longer punish the mentally retarded. We don't exploit them either. We have come a long, long way. Now, we ship them 25 miles out of town to a state-operated institution and forget them while they decay from neglect. They'd just be banging their heads. I mean, uh, some people did it out of frustration. You know, I, I want a feeling, so I bang my head in. While some children are afforded the opportunity to go on a picnic and bask in the sun, others lie awake in their beds, shackled like prisoners, punished, because they cannot control themselves and their illness. How else do you deal with patients that are hyperactive? Uh, I have given some of them uh, intravenous pentobarbital sodium on occasion. Otherwise, they would do harm to themselves and others. In other words, you drug them? Absolutely. My name is Chris Magger, and I'm on a personal mission to find the truth. Hello? I'm joined by my good friend Patrick Shields. Let's just say something. Bullshit. Jake Stock. I feel like someone's touching my neck. What? I feel like someone's touching my neck. And Rick White. I got it right up this area right here. Together, we explore claims of supernatural activity. No matter what we encounter, we will continue our search for the existence of unknown. After great reluctance, I did go and have all the required um, assessments done and everything. And of course, at the end, they told us we should place her in Penhurst. And I said that that wasn't going to happen. And um, they said, well, maybe you'll change your mind. We'll put you on the waiting list. And I said, you can put me on anything you want, but she's not going to Penhurst. The conditions at Penhurst have been withering for quite a while because of the lack of public interest. The institution is a monument to apathy and will remain that way until change can be brought about by concerned action. The social indifference stresses the hangover of 19th century philosophy, which condemns the mentally retarded to a bare existence in facilities like Penhurst. These children can be helped, and they are depending on society to care enough about them. started to pick up rocks and hurl them over the fence at her. And one of the rocks hit Lori right in her the mid, middle of her forehead and knocked her down to the ground. And she just lay there, didn't move, and she was bleeding. The retarded have been ignored, forgotten, and pushed out of our minds much too long. In some cases, their feeling of being abandoned has done their progress. Others have just become more bitter. It's not right. We just can't look ourselves in the mirror when you know what goes on in some of these institutions. It's shameful because this rich country, this great country, can afford to take care of the least of these. Bill Baldini's work exposed Pennhurst. You know, he was a reporter from Philadelphia. He could have gone to Western Center. He could have gone to Polk Center. He could have gone to other places and seen equally horrible things. He happened to go to Pennhurst. And I think he did a real service for the state by doing that, but 
Um, and he happened to have the guts to knock on the lieutenant governor's door uh, and say, uh, Lieutenant Governor, this is going on in your state. The sickening and almost unviewable condition to the institution is largely due to overcrowding and the lack of personnel to provide elementary care. In many cases, children churn in their own filth for only one reason, lack of assistance. The ones that speak detest the inhumane conditions and hunger for the slightest sign of affection. I was a rebel. I was saying, we got to make changes. My whole thought being, my child hasn't got any education available to him. I want to see if that can happen. My child isn't going to end up in the penners because I'm not going to let it happen. Suffer children to come to me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. quiet here. Now outside these buildings, all you can hear is the sound of the breeze and calls of birds. But when I was a young man, a research psychologist visiting this place, standing outside these buildings, all you could hear was human screams. This was Penhurst. Eugenics was both a scientific and a social movement that emerged in the United States and in Europe in the latter part of the 19th century in an effort to bring about what its advocates saw as social improvement. The eugenics movement got started in 1883 with Francis Galton, and he felt that human beings should take evolution in their own hands and that the most talented individuals, the most healthy individuals, the most attractive individuals should have more offspring. There was great concern that people that they considered had poor genes were reproducing faster than the people they considered had good genes. It resulted in sterilization of mentally ill people, sterilization of retarded people, sterilization of people we don't like politically and sociologically. So the problem is not with genetics. The problem is a pretend phony genetics used to justify inhumane social policies. The demand at Pennhurst got out of control right away. The ultimate object of the eugenics movement was social progress. Ironically, the cure for social progress was through the annihilation of the undesirable groups. Groups like the intellectual disabled, or as they called them, feeble-minded and unfit. The rise of Pennhurst coincided with the rise of the eugenics movement in America. They so do where is Johnny retarded. now, doctor? They do not accept retarded. What's Johnny's IQ now? 69. But that is a relative thing. Where is Johnny now? Johnny is on uh, Q2. You have just heard about Johnny. He's been causing discipline problems here at Pennhurst. So they thought they would send him to Q2. We thought you would like to see where Johnny lives. Johnny, can you talk? Yes. Do you like it here at Pennhurst? No. Why not, John? Um, there's... Let me ask you this, John. Do you remember living anywhere except Penhurst? No. Do you like talking to the people up here? Yeah. Why, John? 
And they like to talk to me. How about the other kids, the ones that can talk? Do they like to talk to you, too? Yes. Do you like to talk to them better than the kids up here? Yes. Have you been talking more lately or less? Less. Why are you here in Q2, John? I did something I well wasn't supposed to be doing. So they punished you and put you here? Yes. Do they do this all the time to you, John? Yes. Mara. Mara, how are you doing? Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, I want to say first off, thank you for having us here. Uh, I want to ask you a few questions about this place and why you want to be here. Mm -hmm. What what drawn you to this location? Because I have such a passion for the story of what happened here right. and that history never repeats itself again. So I just truly feel drawn here and that I can be the voice for those who suffer. I've had incredible things happen that has even shocked me. No, it um, shocked you? Mm -hmm. Like what? Um, I've had a crowbar thrown at my head. <laughs> now, when we walked onto this campus today, we noticed that there's a, a beauty to this location that maybe a lot of people don't see. Of course, this place needs to be restored. Yes. And that's what one of the main reasons you guys are here for the restoration of this location. Yes. And it's another thing, so we as Americans don't forget about our past of the early psychiatry and the archaic things that they did here to the children. Is that part of your drive here to help people get to know this and to understand that? Yes, and I always make sure when people come onto the campus for the paranormal that I talk to them a little bit about the history because I feel it's so important that history does not repeat itself. Not only that, to go from, um, you know, the day not that long ago that medical terms were retard and moron and people with disabilities were being treated subhuman to now my niece teaches autistic kids in public schools is astounding. Right. So it's kind of history not repeating itself, but it's also look how far we've come. However, around the world, places like this are still um, happening in other countries. Penhurst closing in 1986, early 1987, started the movement for people with disabilities around the world. It started here at Penhurst. And that's huge. Huge. That Think about huge. it. Huge. And it goes with saying that, and I'm looking over your head right now when we say that's huge. I'm looking at this huge campus mm -hmm. and I think about the energies of those souls and those people and those children that are still here yes. and they're reaching out for help. They're not mean, they're not scared, we're not, they're, maybe they're scared, but they're not angry or evil. They just want help. They probably don't understand why they were treated like that when they were here and why are they still here afterwards. So that's why with Penhurst Paranormal, um, you know, you now see with my hat with Rediscover Penhurst. We're not just paranormal. We're running to refurbish this property. We're wanting to do historical tours. We started doing photography tours. But we do feel it's very important that people know what happened here. Because I don't think that you can step on this campus without, whether it is historical photography or paranormal, without feeling what our passion is. And it really is for those who suffer. In the stairwell, Maybe about a year ago, I was in there by myself, I was taking pictures, and as soon as I snapped the picture, something hit my shoulder and almost pushed me up the step. And I thought it was the guy with me, but it wasn't. Because the guy with me, he was actually standing here, which is 25 feet away. Really? And then uh, I was like, what was that about? And I heard this person whispered in my ears, like, F -F -U. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Hopefully, something that uh, won't get too emotional, but we we want to uh, we want to feel the energy here, and we want to let their story be told to us. And when I say tear this place apart, I'm talking about tearing it apart as far as.
finding the sadness here and hopefully help them release that sadness so they can be more happy and understanding. And to the people that do come here to investigate, respect it. It's not just a place to go ghost hunting. It's also a place to understand the history and learn and respect it. So if you haven't seen the documentary, check out the documentaries. It's very moving. And it's also been considered at one point, some people would say, it's like when it was open, it was like the Auschwitz of America. But now it's gonna be a place of memories, of understanding and learning and respect that guys. that Peter was to join was in the basement of the building, which should have been a clue for me from the beginning. And I entered the room, and the room had the furnace in it. In 1968, Bill Baldini was a journalist working with a local NBC affiliate. Baldini had become aware of the conditions at Penhurst, and the station allowed him to pursue the story. I remember one mother had a very difficult child at home. We were trying to convince her to send her kid to camp, and she was afraid to let her leave the house. And I said, what do you need? And she said, I need help. I just feel like screaming help, because that's what I need, help. The 2,800 children, young and old alike, residing within the confines of Penhurst are for the most part protected from society and the granite wall of ignorance and social blindness protects society from them. These unfortunates are being deprived of their dignity and self-respect. Why? Because only a very, very few seem to care. We entitle our investigative report, Suffer the Little Children. Always before we begin our investigations, we set up static cams. Static cam one is located on the first floor. Static cam two is on the third floor of the Mayflower building that is well known for an aggressive male entity and sounds of doors slamming. Static cam three is in the basement where it reports of a male spirit named Mr. King frequents. We have two static cams set up on the outside catwalk to cover the grounds in hopes to capture the lost souls roam in the courtyard. start off the investigation, we are joined by Adam Hill, Mandy Jordan, and Buddy of What the Hell Was That Paranormal. They would venture into the Mayflower building first as my crew and I would stay on the catwalk just outside of the Mayflower building to conduct some thermal imaging scans of the courtyard. Just imagine this during the when it was open, dude. There's a little guys just walking around aimlessly. It's sad, dude. Most of them no idea really what's going on. This is really sad, man. Nobody here to take care of them. Probably one person watching this whole courtyard. Imagine that, right? This, this is it. This is where you stay. Being treated like crap. Treat like a piece of and you're not, you just want to be loved. Probably want your mom and dad to hold you during Christmas. There it is again. Ting, ting, ting. Dude, I feel like crying right now. Don't get it. I do. Shut up. Kills me, dude. Discoloration of glass. 
But there is this feeling here. I guess because we know about the documentary, know about the history, so there is this feeling of sadness and <clears throat> anguish or whatever. It kind of pulls at your heartstrings. You know what I mean, bro? So you automatically feel sad, you feel depressed. I mean, I feel depressed right now. I just feel this energy of depression here and sadness. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Yeah. I mean, it felt different all day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just want them, I want to sit down and talk with them. You know, the really sad part about that is... What was that? I have no idea. While we were discussing about the sadness that we all felt, we captured a strange sound that we could not explain at all. Maybe this was the very same sound that Pat heard earlier when he thought he heard chains. I want to sit down and talk with him. You know, the really sad part about that is... What was that? I have no idea. You know, the really sad part about that is... What was that? I have no idea. You know, the really sad part about that is... What was that? I have no idea. Dude, that was crazy. Yeah, that's a sign. You hear that too? Did you not hit something? No, that came from down there. Whoops, something got thrown or slammed. Yeah. Same thing I heard. Rick, scan over there, see if there's anybody over there. Like a real person. Just out that whole general area. Well, I just heard someone throw something or slam something. Did you say something? But we didn't know at this time, we captured what sounded like a possible male spirit was trying to reach out to us. We could not find any reasonable explanation of where this extra male's voice came from. Oh. <clears throat> Did you say something? Did you say something? Oh. <clears throat> Did you say something? After spending an hour outside, we would trade spots with Adam Hill and his gang. We would begin what would become an intense investigation of the Mayflower building. Before we started to head up to the third floor, we decided to go to the basement and change the batteries on the full spectrum camera. And it would seem we had an unknown visitor that was captured on Derek's audio.
can unlock these doors and let you outside if you want. Sometimes, not everything is paranormal. We are showing this clip because at first we couldn't explain what Rick captured because it went by so fast. After careful review, our thoughts were confirmed that all we experienced at this moment was just a normal winged creature of the night, a bat. continue our investigation of the third floor, we would find ourselves having personal experiences that could not be explained, like pure energy was surrounding us at the end of the hall. And the most creepy moment is when we hear something or someone come up the stairs and never capturing anything on video to understand why or who was coming up the stairs. We knew for a fact that everyone else was outside of the Mayflower building on the catwalk with John. So this would be considered a very personal experience that still has us blown away. Was it small or was it like it, a big? No, it wasn't real big. Are you touching me? I'm not touching you right now. Are you f***ing kidding me, dude? No. That's right in the area. I told you I f***ing seen that thing and it took like a second for it to get out Move of my face. Move your camera away from me. While we were listening for whatever or whoever was coming up the stairs and knowing well that the other crew is outside of the building, we were surprised by the sound of something or someone slamming a door or slamming something on the steps in front of us. What do you mean? Is, that, is there anything there? Whoa. What the f is there anything there? Whoa. What the f Is there anything there? Whoa. What the f My hair standing up. Is there nothing here? Dude, I just got hit with a blast of cold air. Someone's walking. Hey man, come on. We playing a game? Which way would you like us to go? Dude, 
too. I feel like someone's grabbing my arm right here, dude. I'm serious. I still hear it walking. I don't see nothing, Chris. What's the temperature around my arm? It's 90-something degrees by your hand where you got holding on to the camera. camera. Come on the stairs. Tell us your name, please, at least, if you're playing a game. Who's behind you, Rick? You want us to look over there to take your attention off of here? Yet again, the same sound of doors slamming was all around us, this time coming from behind Rick and Derek, in the same direction where we was in the large room at the end of the hall that had some numerous reports of people having personal attacks by an unknown force. Tell us your name, please, at least, if you're playing a game. Tell us your name, please, at least, if you're playing a game. Wow. It was behind you, Rick. Tell us your name, please, at least, if you're playing a game. Wow. It was behind you, Rick. Um, I know they want to do this audio tone test with us, man. Let's do it. Man, let's go down, get them together, get some more cool water in our system. Do you ever piss ice cubes? I have no, I put my uh, I'm, I'm, You're on camera. Put ice cubes in my mouth. We at TSP feel that using vibrational frequencies helps the communication barrier that we are lacking between our world and the spirit world. We use a shepherd's tone to help the two spirit worlds come closer. The Catholic Church has banded this tone because they feel it can cause possession to a person very easily. But there is no documented facts to back that up. Now if you are or anybody is very sensitive to certain frequencies, high or low, please turn down your audio during this segment. We at TSP and Paranormal Reality TV caution do not use this tone without understanding the dynamics first and are not liable. not figure out where this unknown male's voice came from. We reviewed every video and audio piece to make sure that there was no one else in our group that was speaking during this time. We had no solid explanation to where this voice came from. Maybe it was truly a spirit trying to communicate with us with the help of the vibrational frequency bridge.
didn't also realize during the tone test that we captured numerous sounds on a full spectrum camera on the third floor. The very same floor that Mara told us of a large male spirit that likes to attack much more alpha type men. These sounds that we captured sounded like doors slamming and items being thrown. And again, there was nobody on the third floor during the tone test. Myself would head up to the third floor after the tone test one more time before we do our next experiment, the audio quarantine. What we would encounter was very shocking for my bro Pat. Derek joins Adam Hill and Buddy in the basement one more time while Pat and I and Rick head up to the third floor. So it's gotta be you. What do you, do you like to go around spraying people's cologne and perfume? But Derek didn't realize that he just captured what could have been one of the very females that face uncomfortable moments in the basement. Only Derek, Adam Hill, and Buddy were in the basement when they captured this lady's voice. We went hit the first floor before we all wrap up. I don't care. We never really investigated up there. That smell up there was crazy. Yeah. It was hell. I mean, he should have been in there for that. What is it? It was following us or it was leaving us. One of the two. That's kind of like me. What's that? We went hit the first floor before we all wrap up. I don't care. We never really investigated up there. That smell up there was crazy. Yeah. 
Well, you want to hit the first floor before we all wrap up? somebody off I'm just asking you what kind of cologne and shit you wear because it's one thing that it was just around my neck and I felt pressure but it kept getting tighter what we're kind of gonna do right now we haven't done it in a while is an audio quarantine let the uh, spirits just do their thing while we step out of the building Let's set up one more static cam in the back room for the audio quarantine experiment where supposed allegations of a small boy was mistreated on many occasions. What we captured sounded like somebody was tearing apart something in this back room. compelling pieces of evidence we captured here at Penhurst was a black mass moving into the back area where Pat had the last static cam set up and we captured the sounds of something being ripped apart. We tried to dismiss this as a bat or a bird, but you can see clearly if it was a bat or a bird, it would be flying in front of the IR of the camera and casting a shadow on the wall, but there was no animal or any type of creature large enough to cast a shadow on the back wall flying in the IR range of our static camera. Is this a scared spirit trying to find a place to hide? Was it the very same one that made the noise in the back room? All we know is that this is truly an unknown existence. So we asked the question, what do people want? It was a simple question, what do people want? And then because self-advocates were listened to, we heard things like, I don't want to take medication that I don't want. I don't want to live with people who hit me. I don't want people to make fun of me. The wants were really devastating, really devastating. And it sobered everybody up. And then we spent a day saying the question that Guy Caruso and Jerry Provencal asked is, if everything could be the way you'd want it to be, what would it look like? And they had this big paper on the wall and drew pictures of everything. And it was pictures of going to school and you know getting married if you want to get married and having a job and going to the parks and voting and all that kind of stuff. And one of the dads who was from the Ark, 
whose daughter lived in an institution and over his dead body, was she ever going to leave that institution? He looked at the wall and he said, oh my God, that's just the life the rest of us have. Everybody in Pennsylvania and the National know what Roland, Mark, Justin Dart stood for, justice for all. We are all in this together, and I, that's what I keep telling people. We are all in this together. We cannot do this alone. I like her. She's my sister. That's right. We're sisters. Don't be shy. Hello. Okay? Because... We want to hear your story. We want to know about you, okay? And so do other people, because you have a good story. Yeah. Yeah. You my you you my um, big sister. Yeah. Yeah. Do you help me? Do you take care of me? Yeah. We take care of each other. Yeah.